On this day in history, the 17th of August 2005, something terrible occurred in the country of Bangladesh. Now, what happened on this day in history that was that 500 bombs were set off in 300 different locations in 63 of 64 provinces in Bangladesh. Now, this 500 bombings occurred in a space of 30 minutes from 11.30 a.m. to 12 noon this day in history. Um, there was an Islamist terrorist organization um, that was responsible. They claimed responsibility for this attack. And it wasn't until, you know, the next year, March 2006, that these suspects, um, two suspects were eventually captured. Now, five were sentenced to death. One was sentenced to 20 years in prison for their parts in the bomb attacks in that country. Uh, by the year 2013, you know, prosecutors had chased down these cases and about 200 of them out of 273 found in connection with the 2005 Bangladesh bombings were disposed of. Terrible situation, terrible day in Bangladesh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm mind blown really, uh, you know, to hear about the figures, 500 bombs in the 300 locations, 63 out of 64, that is, that is insane. But, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I think it maybe also is a good time to, you know, to I mean, about talk about... 62 of 63. 62 of 63, okay. I think it's also a good time to um, wonder um, why um, there is always these things connected with Islamist, you know, fundamentalist. Hmm. It never is with any other religion. And I'm and, and trying to, you know, say this as carefully as possible. It never is with any other religion. It's never with any other, you know, cause. It's always the same Islamist fundamentalist. When you hear about religious extremists, it's always with um, Islamists. Um, and I, I think it was yesterday or two days ago that I posted something saying that um, I think I'm also, I have also mentioned it here that simply saying, and this is to our Muslim brothers and, and sisters and everyone who, you know, um, is, who, who, you know, uh, reads the Quran judiciously and, of course, is a Muslim, simply saying that these people aren't practicing the true Islam and the real Islam is not ever going to be enough anymore. If you're looking at what's happening in Afghanistan today, if you look at, you know, the growth of ISIS and ISIL and, and Al-Qaeda and, you know, every other terrorist group, Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, simply saying that all the beautiful, peaceful, peace-loving Muslims across the world are the ones practicing the true Islam and what the Quran truly teaches is never going to be enough. I think there's so much more work that needs to be done to teach and to practice and to show and to to force the true peace that the Quran teaches, that the Islam teaches, by simply denouncing them, it's, never in a, it's not in any way changing or reducing the amount of these extremists and, and these religious um, extremists. So much more work needs to be done. I've, I've said it to a couple of friends of mine who you know, always try to tell you, oh, you, know, you don't know the Quran well enough, you've not read well enough, go read the Quran, you know that Islam doesn't teach violence and all of that. Okay. But it's still the same religion that is being used by these extremists. So maybe there's more to it that we really don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 see, I see where you're coming from to some extent. You know, if you know, Muslim friends of ours tell us that these terrorists are not practicing the true Islam, so whose responsibility is it, is it to teach these people the true Islam since, you know, they obviously are getting it wrong? Um, that's why you can never overemphasize the role that religion has to play as well as religious leaders, because definitely these people are coming from some form of doctrine or teaching. So I believe that Christian Muslim leaders have a role to play in making sure that they really teach what the true Islam is and find out what exactly is the origin of these fake Islamic teachings that practice or that um, you know, emphasizes violence and subjugation of people, women and children. You know? So yes, religious leaders do have a role to play. It's a very small amount um, of the uh, persons. Anyway, I think let's not waste too much time on this uh, discussion. We would um, now move to 1998, where on this day, uh, former President uh, Bill Clinton testified before a U.S. Uh, grand jury. He had been accused. This was a four-year-long investigation, and he had been accused of you know a couple of things. But I think the one that stuck was his um, you know relationship with um, uh, Monica Lewinsky, who was working in the White House then. Um, on this day, he, first of all, denied any sexual relationship or any sexual you know, business with Ms. Lewinsky. 
Um, um, and un unfortunately, and I've also seen theories that show that the amount of money that was spent in investigating Bill Clinton's uh, relationship with Mon Monica Lewinsky was even more than the amount of money that was spent in the 9-11 uh, investigation. Um, but this became the highlight of that trial. There were other things that uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary were accused of at that time. Some mismanagement of funds, some, you know, um, you know, real estate, you know, issues here and there. But it was Monica Lewinsky's story that stuck. Um, he denied it outrightly and eventually was impeached, um, you know, but, you know, after um, a couple of weeks um, was acquitted. Um, the, uh, the, the issue with, you know, him being impeached was, of course, he was accused of lying on their oath um, when he said that he didn't have any business with Monica Lewinsky and then eventually owned up to it, you know, not long after to say that, yes, he did have sexual relationships with, um, or sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky. Mm -hmm. um, his uh, case or his argument then was that the question wasn't put to him outright. It seemed like it was an audacious question and so he didn't necessarily lie. Um, you know, to the to the jury, but you know, things eventually turned out that way, and he was impeached um, um, before, of, of course, being acquitted and uh, let to finish his ten uh, tenure. Yeah, this story just takes us back to reflecting on you know law, right, and how people can, add, can basically get away with anything if they have a good lawyer, if they have a good mm -hmm. defense, you know. They keep saying lawyers are not liars. Yes, there's a fact to that. But the, but the thing about law is it's really what's, what you can prove. It's about yeah. evidence. Even if you did something, if it can't be proved, that's the challenge of law and prosecution. You have to be able to prove beyond reasonable doubt that someone actually committed a certain crime. And regarding that first trial, he said that the answers he gave were legally accurate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you define that. Legally accurate that he had not, you know, outwardly lied or asked anybody to lie, but eventually admitted that he had had inappropriate, you know, relations with Lewinsky and um, apologized to his wife for misleading her and apologized to the American people. But I think he was the first ever U.S. president to be, um, uh, I'm not to face sure. this, um, this sort of, yeah. Sort of um, to be impeached, um, I think, I, I'm, I don't want to give any false information, but I think he probably is the first, or there was one before him, and then Donald Trump eventually. Hmm. Um, but of, of course, Actually, you know, he was Actually, the first acquitted. sitting president yeah. to testify before the office of the yeah. grand jury. All right, um, that's what happened on this day in 2005 in Bangladesh, 500 bombs going off in uh, 300 locations, and in the United States where... Uh, from President Bill Clinton, uh, testified before a jury on this day with regards to his, um, you know, alleged relationships with Monica Lewinsky and then other crimes that he was also accused of. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into our first um, major discussion for today. We're going to be looking at the abductions in Zamfara and in other parts of the country and what more needs to be done to protect Nigerian citizens and Nigerian school um, uh, students uh, moving forward. We'll be joined by Yahoo Zagetso, who is a security analyst. Stay with us.